want to talk about an ICON system that we are working on at the University of Minnesota. And I'm working with a colleague, Karen Munson. She's a faculty member in the School of Nursing. Um, I'm Barbara Martinson, and I'm in the College of Design in the Graphic Design Program. And it was about a year ago, Karen called me up and said, we'd like to develop a set of icons for um, a project they're working on called the Omaha System. Um, and it was perfect timing for me because I was going on sabbatical this year and would have time to really just focus on this um, design project, which I find as an academic, I get very little time to focus on anything, much less design work, and be able to do some really thoughtful uh, design work. And we have a team of undergraduate students in the nursing program working with us. They've done some of the preliminary research, very similar to what Penelope was talking about, of working with subjects or um, people who would be home health caregivers and early folks with the system, of finding out what symbols they would use in certain healthcare situations. So first, a bit about the healthcare system, or about the Omaha system. I'm going to step away just because I feel trapped. So tell me if you can't hear me. Um, also, my, I'm having trouble reading that up there. So our goal was to develop a set of icons for the Omaha system. And this is a system that really is kind of an organizational taxonomy to be used by home health caregivers in the um, giving of uh, client care. And it's currently done all with words and with increasing um, health care individuals, but also home health caregivers. Um, reading um, becomes difficult. Sometimes people just don't read things, as we were talking about in an earlier session today. Um, and so we thought that the use of icons um, would help with people's uh, ability to read. And by seeing the icon, they might be more likely to go to text, say, if it's an icon for heart disease. They might see that urgency and go and read the um, text about the health care uh, for that. So users uh, represent the continuum of care um, for increasingly diverse audiences. Um, 22,000 uh, multidisciplinary cl clinicians using the uh, Omaha system currently. And so these icons would be used in the patient's electronic health record, and they would be used to um, help identify specific problems um, with the patient. So first of all, what is an icon? We've just seen a number of icons with Panina's presentation. But when I say icon, what comes first to your minds? Anybody throw that up? A flat image. A flat image, a flat image. Yeah. OK. Yeah. An image that represents something else? It represents something else, yeah. Either symbolically or um, you know, sort of literally or symbolically. Um, Horton defines icons as small visual symbols for commands, programs, and data in the computer. And I think that's sort of interesting because, of course, um, we also have used icons uh, for the development of language. And we go from maybe an iconic representation of an animal or a, a natural um, object, and that evolves into the more abstract, abstract sort of letter forms. Um, and we also, you know, if I were growing up and somebody would say icons, the first thing that would have come up, you know, 30, 40 years ago would have been Russian icons. Um, the fact that there were these pieces of art labeled icons um, and they were specifically uh, used in religious circumstances to embody some of the um, religious leaders, but also um, the beliefs of the religious system. And I think icons come very close to things like our national symbols, um, where it stands for the nation, and there's various symbolic aspects to that. So the, the uh, emblem itself carries with it the, uh, this does look pretty um, uh, symbols of a country. And we might not know them all. We have to learn them. And I think that's an important part of icons is we might not recognize them right away, but as um, Nina's talked about the Adonairaf quote, that we can learn them um, and then use them. Um, on the, to the right of the national symbol is an emblem of the globe, so a, a male figure um, signifying 
or standing in for um, the globe or the earth. Um, the far right then is an Aesop's fable. Um, anybody know what that fable means? Or what it stands for? We don't use fables so much anymore. Um, well, it's a dog, and what's he doing? He sees his reflection with the bone. He sees his reflection in the, in the river or the pond. Um, and then his dilemma, of course, is he's seeing it as another dog <laughs> with a bone. And the, the sort of moral of the story, the dog literally drops his real bone that's in his mouth, and it falls in the river, and then his bone's gone. And that was just a reflection he was seeing. And so it's an allegory or a symbol for greed, the fact that this dog would um, drop his bone in order to get another one. Um, so that's some sort of a, not really a moral, but a, a, a meaning to it. Um, emblematic figures such as the um, Liberty uh, in the French Revolution, um, where, again, uh, beliefs are personified within a figure. Um, and then, of course, the more abstract figures for male and female, um, early sort of iconic figures to represent genders, and certainly logos such as the IBM, which does, you know, spells out or the uh, initials for IBM, but also the lines used on the computer screen. Um, so the combination of sort of literal representation and symbolic representation. But I think really what we've kind of come to at this point is that our current perception of an icon is a small illustration, a small figure, and that helps lead us to certain things. So we know where to turn our computer on. We know where to go if we have a question at the airport. We look for that big letter I. Uh, we know when it's time to cross the street, um, and we can find the male or female bathrooms. So let's, I've got an activity before I talk about our system. Um, you each got uh, examples of some of the icons we've been working in front of you. And this first sheet that I want you to look at is the one that has the icons with little circles beneath them. And we're just starting our testing, and I think this is going to be one of our testing tools. Yeah. So I want you to take just a very few minutes, and I don't think you're going to be able to get all 16 done and keep us on time. So maybe see if you can get two or three of matching the image with the title of the icon. Okay, so let's just take a minute or two. Um, there should be a couple pencils at your table if you don't have them. Just try to get three or four done and then we'll talk a bit. This, these directions don't work because my time was crunched a little bit more than I thought it would be. So if you can just figure out three or four of those icons. had a couple minutes to uh, match those. Um, 
I'd be curious to know which one, maybe which icon did you get right away? It was very um, clear and logical. Anybody want to venture? Yeah. Well, and I better make sure. Let's see which Each one. one or this one? Yeah, this one is a tip. This one, the. It's very hard to like here, so I don't know. Okay. So you're pointing out, actually, neither one of those is Greek. Because obviously, there are um, there are way more titles there than you or have icons. Or the heart, the heart, a broken heart with the tear in the face. Yeah. Now you're going to be really surprised when you find out what that I might know. mean. They are very similar. So one of the challenges I'm really facing as a designer is this notion of very literal concepts, but then very symbolic concepts. Like yours is neglect. Well, how do you make an icon for neglect? And that's been my biggest challenge. Or the broken heart and grief. It's fairly easy to do an icon for exercise in terms of a health behavior or um, food, pictures of food. Some of you probably had that on yours. And what we're finding is that some of those um, icons that are of uh, feelings um, could be very easily confused. So one of our biggest challenges is to make them distinct enough so they can be um, seen as separate things. And then once you learn that that one is neglect, or this other one is the broken heart. Um, hopefully you would learn that. And we're still trying to figure out working the testing with um, people. So I want to talk a little bit about existing health care system um, icons. And um, the ones on the left, I got distributed through the Society for Experimental um, Graphic Design. Um, they are coordinated a bit with the IGA and the IGA's highway symbols and the, a lot of the teams that work on these very standard icons that we will recognize. Um, there was some overlapping and lots and lots of testing of these icons um, that we are more used to seeing. Um, but these are healthcare icons coming from the standard set of icons, the same groups that we see for transportation. Um, uh, and so we're used to reading these black and so one on the right is a French system, and it's called um, the Visual um, Visual uh, Concepts for Medicine, and it's an incredibly complex um, system, and it's really wonderful. The images seem pretty simple, but you have to learn them to be able to know what they're expressing. Obviously, I've kind of grouped these, so both are dealing with food or eating. That's healthy nutrition. This one is also healthy nutrition, but using just the four. Um, this one is working with a, a healthcare professional. Um, it could be a doctor, it could be a nurse, and this is the BCM method of, this kind of represents an aspect of the patient, um, and then if you're seeing a doctor, you see the stethoscope as a symbol for the doctor. And here we have both doctor and the stethoscope. Um, this gets kind of abstract and one step over. Um, Prescription medication. Um, the way the BCM system does that is this is um, either lungs or um, breathing um, capabilities, and then they're on medication for that by putting the green cross, um, a symbol for a drugstore. Um, more in Europe, obviously, the drugstores have these green crosses, so there's that connection. They also use the shape of the icon to indicate the, um, uh, how much this is affecting the patient. If this is a square, it means it's a, a concern, but it's not um, readily drastic or harmful. Um, it's just there. But the fact that this is pointing down means that it actually is a serious problem with the uh, patient and that their progress or their um, status of health is diminishing. So 
So for the Omaha system, this was a very early step. Um, I started out doing this, um, uh, did the first one Omaha, actually the little button on top. Um, and these wouldn't necessarily be buttons to carry the links, but they are just visual explanatories. But we're kind of having a hard time now with sizing these because if they're too small, we don't know that we'll use it to read them. And yet the computer, the company we're working with makes them really quite small. Um, so that's another challenge is the size. Or so for the Omaha system, um, I used also a fairly typical one for nutrition, but it's a little more literal of, say, milk, fruit, um, and whole grains. Um, I grouped, uh, strongly inspired probably by this one, of the healthcare doctor, but being behind the patient. And I thought that's a sort of different relationship, isn't it, of this being large and in the foreground, those being in the background. And here the doctor's kind of in the background, but the the patient is in the front, and to me that is a different message. Um, and so again, our testing want to see if that bears out in that the uh, patient is being seen by a doctor. And at the bottom again, it's meditation. This one is maybe a little too complex, um, of taking numbers of uh, prescriptions, but most pe people under home health care would be taking um, a number of prescriptions. My other goal for this having been a home health caregiver for four elderly relatives, um, I find that a lot of things having to do with health are not very cheery. Even your malaria things, though, they're, they're the colors and, you know, they kind of drive, they, they're more aesthetic and the color maybe makes you feel good or the good design of them it helps in the situation. Let's just say that. And I think sometimes some of the uh, icons used or even the imagery in terms of with patients, um, they're kind of downers. And I thought, can these icons have color, be a little brighter, um, and maybe the color also um, presents um, some information. So um, thinking about connotations of form, again, I've got the three different systems here that we're, that we've been looking at, um, the standard icons, the VCM icons, and the ones I'm testing out for the um, Omaha system. And the, the interesting thing is the way they use um, abstraction, and I got another slide of that, but you've got this sort of um, imagery that we looked at before, but then we want to look more closely at the figures themselves. Um, this male figure to me seems a little unhuman. Um, it's very standardized. Um, I have been playing around with trying to make it pretty much recognizable as of that, but maybe a little more um, rounder, uh, less flat, um, almost slight, I don't want to say comic bookish, but or avatar-like maybe is a better word, um, that these are stand-ins um, for human beings. And we could have an interesting discussion, I think, just on how these forms affect our reading of them. These are standards, so right away we don't even think about it. That stands for either a person or a male. Um, this is a little more androgynous, and I preferred it like that. And we'll, we'll be testing that as well. Um, this is how the VCM uses the human figure, and it has this very abstract human figure, and puts the various problems that the patient has within it. So it's kind of a man made up of problems. I want to talk a little bit about the color. I mentioned I wanted to use color um, for several reasons, um, but literally to live it up and maybe be a little more symbolic. But look at the icons provided on the other handout that should be at your table. Um, and what, what, uh, how does color affect the icons? We're used to seeing them as black or gray. What about color on icons? What are some of the issues? What are some of the benefits? And this is going to be a thin pair share where you kind of talk to your table mates about that. So take a minute or two to just quickly talk about <coughs> Thank you. 
I had some experience. So, but I've never, I never saw her try to do anything that detailed. I think that was a good. So what were you talking about? Some of the major things. Comments on color. Thumbs up to color, thumbs down to color. Any thoughts or ideas? I think color kind of depends because it does take like a second or a third look to be able to completely know what you're talking about in an icon. I think when you add color. Um, especially color, like this detailed amount of color that you mm -hmm. do. Uh, so it, it depends on what you're communicating. Right, and there there could be repercussions if it it could be good if people spend more time with it and want to understand it, or it could be bad if people I don't get it and just right. blow it off. Yeah. Yes. Oh. Um, yeah. I mean, I think it, the the color. It makes me think of things that are a little bit more specific. So when I was looking at the, the doctor, mm -hmm. the blue made me think of a hospital. Right. Um, whereas when I saw the other one, right, I was just thinking about medical in general. Right. Just right. The, the stethoscope. Yeah. Right. How about this table?
Can we turn that into kind of trees or, or growth coming out of the brain for um, mental health, that it's healthy and growing? Um, there I think green mycelin to help designate the plants as well. When you see it in black, it may not be quite as effective. Um, so the challenges are really quite rewarding. Somebody mentioned the border. Um, the Omaha system has four domains, health behaviors, environment, psychosocial, and uh, physiological. And we are still trying to determine, do we want those domains to be keep, to keep the color, to say the domains of health caregivers? And we've not quite figured that out. But this helps you see sort of the rationale of including some colored aspects. Um, issues of representation and abstraction, I think I continually sort of battle with. These are more literal. You get figures with lungs in them. Um, these are the standard symbols. Um, usually it's on this, this figure, which I usually read as male. I tried putting it on a female. The problem there is that the lungs then may start to look like breasts. So you're confusing body parts. The other thing in abstraction, um, here a more cartoon approach to the digestive system. Here is the um, standard one through the SDG or AIJ. Um, not accurate, um, but really none of them are. And this is the BCM, where you lose any reference to the individual and you've got this sort of uh, white swoosh going through. So for more literal to more abstract. And then I've talked about these images that are hard. This is the grief with the broken heart um, and the tear. If I do the heart red, then more people seem to read it as a broken heart. Neglect probably was the biggest challenge, is how do you represent neglect? Um, and so the figure sitting down in the corner with a drooping head um, was it. This is spirituality for now, and I don't think we're there with that one. Um, but we did not want to represent any specific form of religion or any type of belief system. So the notion of trying to do spirituality, I had a sun for the longest time. The sun in ancient cultures was obviously a symbol of God or a hierarchical power. Um, we threw that out fairly early. So we are still, still working on some of these. Pragmatic concerns of legibility. Um, people's visual literacy to be able to read them, um, I think will be a challenge. Um, and then the consequences of error icon confusion. I always joke as a graphic designer, well, at least I can't kill anybody if I'm making a poster for an event. Well, in this case, you know, it could become dangerous if the um, icons were not clear enough. And then there were design challenges. Um, how do you represent those difficult concepts? And I've talked about the um, neglect and the um, spirituality there. Um, and you read this as a heart weeping, right, as grief. Um, anybody want to have a guess of what that might be?
So I can't really, um, I can't just say this one is this because there are some similarities. And again, we're just starting to test and the reason there are three different forms for you is to sort of negate any on-carry effect. You know, if you do one, um, you could be influenced. And then on each one, we're trying to also include two that could really be confused. And we want to see how people confuse them. So, yeah, I can't, I, I can't, I can tell you one if you want to know personally afterwards, but um, I can't say number one is this and number two is that because there are three different versions out there. And that is purposeful. under a number of different sizes and also the, the vehicle, which is the electronic screen. Um, so. But we are just ready to go out and start to test these um, in the next couple months. I'm curious, for actually for both of you, is there, have you found, is there one sort of definitive universal symbol that no matter what it is recognizable. Maybe not the meaning of it, right? Like if it's trying to communicate like men's restroom or women's restroom. But but is there one thing that people identify with whether or not they're in a highly urban area or a rural area or impoverished area? Um, I, I, in my experience, I would say uh, just the male and female symbol. Like it's, it's again, whether it's Uber or